everybody, it's Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby, and we're here with Seth Arnold to talk about the new Hangar 9 Extra, so we can get all this together, Extra 300 Cardin Aircraft Edition. Yep. Is that correct? Yep, the Hangar 9 Cardin Aircraft Extra 300. It's kind of a, uh, a hybrid Hangar 9 Cardin airplane. Uh, okay. It's got some Hangar 9 construction techniques along with Cardin Aircraft construction techniques. Uh, you know, fully sheeted wings, fully sheeted fuse. Uh, very similar to a lot of the larger Cardin Aircraft airplanes you see on the IMAX circuit, guys okay. flying those out there. Uh, but it's in the in the 50cc size, size range, so a little more available to a lot of people because it's an ARF and it's a little bit smaller, a little more inexpensive. And, and that's really the unique thing. You've got Cardin Aircraft design considerations going into an ARF. Right, I mean, exactly. It's, it's a very pre-assembled kit from that perspective. So. Yep, exactly, exactly. Uh, Competition-wise, you guys have any plans for the for the hangar or for the uh, Extra 300? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't know if there's too many competitions per se that this airplane's gonna actually be going to from, from any of the team guys actually mm -hmm. flying it. But, um, you know, it's, it's great for an IMAT contest, great for yep. freestyle flying, you know. Great for those guys that maybe don't want to mess with a 35% sized airplane yeah, or the, the yeah. expense of a 35% or larger airplane you know excellent and uh, it's great just to stick in the van and go out to the field yeah that's the nice thing with the with uh, the 3d aero badge you guys pop the wings off you got something fairly compact you can take off and fly exactly availability wise though when can you expect to these are actually all available now they so we've now, been so. shipping them for a while now a lot of guys out there have them already and having having some good times with them okay great well thanks Seth we appreciate it yep no problem so now I moved around the corner and we're talking to Colton Clark who's uh, who's standing in front of the new uh, ultra micro yak Right? <laughs> ultra micro. Something like that, yeah. Super, super ultra mega I micro. I wish it was bigger than what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about the, uh, the new composite Kiki Yak? This is uh, Kike's new Yak. It's 102 inches. Um, if, if you're familiar with uh, the Kike Aircraft Company, yep. he had the 102s out. He had Gen 1 through Gen 4. Mm -hmm. This is like a line extension of that company. It's something he, he told me, like when he started the company, he's always wanted to do a composite airplane. He's never had his own funding to do it. Okay. Horizon's given him that opportunity. Like the plane is it's exactly what he envisioned the plane would be um the stiffness of the plane is makes it just what it is the plane already flew great mm -hmm. it's just the stiffness makes it just that much better the plane being composite will last forever as long as you take care of it right this plane has already got a ton of flights on it. it's probably got 100 plus flights on it really? as it is and it, it the, the actual looks demo, like it does right now yeah, yeah the showcase model yep this plane is the same one that was in the video and all amazing. that amazing um, the plane, it flies great with a 100 on it. Okay. We've been flying 120s on them. Uh, Kike thought ahead of time with the 120, the, uh, the left plug cap sticks out. There's actually an included blister that you can add on if you're using the oh, 120. Oh, you can cut out the cowl and pop yep. the blister on. That's cool. Yep. Uh, we've been running 8911 HVs and it flies killer on that. We haven't burned yeah. up any servos. So really? If you're getting blowback on this thing, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the plane, in my opinion, man, it's, uh, it's really pushing the limits. It's, it's making me think of new things that, you know, aerobatic planes can do. Sure. This plane does the tightest waterfalls I've ever seen, an air, like a big aerobatic plane do. Really? It, it kind of flies like a profile sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what, with it being composite and stuff, what are its characteristics more like? Is it small, does it fly like a smaller plane? Does it fly... It's, uh, it's quite more precise. Yeah. You can really feel it. There's, it. Everything always feels in trim. You're not really kind of trimming every flight. Okay. You don't notice it during flight. You don't gotcha. notice things like twisting. Like if you're doing like a full left roll wide open and you switch, there's no lag time. It just it's goes. Just it's goes, just instantly yeah. going right. It's just, yeah. just really fast. So extremely clean airframe, extremely yep. rigid airframe yep. uh, results in real crisp handling. Yeah, we've, uh, we beat on it pretty hard. It can take, uh, it's, it's probably the highest capable G plane I've met so far. Really? That's um, amazing. Now looking at, you know, you've covered a lot of the features. Um, what other things have you guys dialed into it or built in uh, in terms of flexibility for accommodating different power plants, uh, different radio setups? Uh, this plane actually being composite, it's basically empty. Yeah. You do what you want with it. Uh, the motor dome, we've got it as a, you know, it's the vibration motor dome. Mm -hmm. uh, most composites, they have a motor dome that's either built on or glue in permanently. This okay. one is actually removable and it's a soft mount. Oh, all right. And so the coolest thing about this plane, in my opinion, during assembly is the fact that you can assemble the whole motor off the plane, servo and everything. You can have the whole motor set up before you bolt it on. So it becomes modular. Yeah. This plane, you can actually take the cans, the whole motor power plant system out of it with yeah. 10 bolts. Yeah, see, now that's true competition in mind, too. It's very that's cool, yeah. yeah. It's very competition friendly. Uh, Kike designed it with competition in mind. You know, he flew the TOC for years. Mm -hmm. The rules in the TOC were you had to fly the same plane for both precision and 3D. If you switched, you switched permanently. Right. So this plane actually is really good at precision and amazing at 3D. Real wide fly down below yep. for the two purposes. Well, that's great. Uh, availability, um, we, we um, can see the price. It's, it's very affordable at, at uh, 99, no, 699, no, 1699. 1699, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, but you know, you get a composite plane, this is an investment, and this is, a, a, like I said, a long-term ownership mm -hmm. uh, relationship as well. Availability on the, uh, on the uh, Yak-54. Um, they're, they're shipping now. Shipping um, they're now. shipping in low quantities as we get them in. They're, uh, they don't have a very high production rate. Right. 
So they, they ship as they come in. Okay. It'll be it'll be over time that you'll receive yours. You can back order at any point in time. Great. Um, the price on it actually that you pointed that up. It's actually very competitively priced, but it's the most assembled composite plant on the market. Highly right completed. Now. Yeah, yeah. The ailerons yeah. are hinged and everything. Um, you'll see it at the XFC. XFC. 100% okay. for sure. Uh, we'll have them at Joe and All hanging out and yep. stuff like that. Okay. Uh, Seth and I will probably hit a few events with them. Are you gonna take Seth flying with this too? Uh, Seth's yeah. been flying it. Yeah. <laughs> Seth, Seth's got you, some you time. Don't want, you put all this work and time into it. You don't need to have yeah. Seth flying. It should be yours. Should I've actually... still got more hours than Seth on it right now. Oh, okay. All right. He's well, catching up quick, though. And now we've got the Inversa 280 Bind and Fly Basic that Colton's going to get us familiar with as well. Yeah, the, uh, the Inversa 280, um, it's a new aerobatic plane on the market. It will be a full scale eventually. Okay. Um, they're actually, Kevin's been working on it. It's uh, Kike Samazini, Kevin Kimball, and Mirko Kikorai has been actually making this um, for a little while as it's been a uh, concept development to a full scale plane. Okay. Um, as you know, Kevin Kimball designs the full scale Model 12, like mm -hmm. the Beast and so on. But yeah, this will be the uh, the Model 12 monoplane. Okay. Uh, the Inversa is a, it'll be a radial scale airplane. Hopefully you'll be seen at air shows and like really very aerobatic plane. Oh, excellent. Um, as far as having the model up first, I've seen a lot of really cool qualities about it. It's, um, it's actually amazed me as, as some of the uh, the coupling characteristics of it. Okay. It has zero knife edge coupling with the correct CG and no downline coupling. Okay. And most aerobatic planes actually carry a little bit of negative incidence or a little bit of up trim during mm -hmm. regular flight because they're so zeroed out. Right. Well, on this, like, you know, on a downline, you actually give it a little bit of, you know, down mix. Mm -hmm. This plane doesn't require that. It'll actually just track straight down. Really? So there's literally no mixing in any of my programs so for this airplane. There's a lot of interesting characteristics going on with the airframe itself. It's a pretty wild airplane yeah. as it is. Um, the, the airplane is super precise. If anybody's flown the Edge 540QQ 280, mm -hmm. which is actually, it's my favorite line. I love the 280 class. It's really aggressive, really yep. quick yep. and agile. Um, the plane is so affordable much more as well for the hobby. Very too. affordable. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, the plane is so much more, uh, um, like, it's just precise. It just holds lines better than the Edge, and it's actually more aggressive 3D than the Edge. This plane has way more tail authority than we imagined it would ever have. Gotcha. So then this thing's wide open. The way it's 3X it's or anything like that, yep. it's, it's no all extra. native airframe you're, uh, yep. airframe you're flying. Just like the Edge setup, um, yep. we've actually came out with a new prop due to all the um, the complaints and stuff like that we've mm -hmm. had. I mean, like, all you know, we listen to the customers. Sure. Uh, this will this will come out with a V2 prop that you can actually use on the Edge. It's the same system. Okay. So, um... Good and we've deal. also just developed a new battery. We have the E Flight uh, 45050C that'll be coming out around the time of the release of this one. Uh, okay, a lot higher, lot higher yep. uh, discharge rate. That's great. Well, cool. And availability? Uh, if, availability, if this should come out at uh, the end of the next month. End of next month, great. Yep. Well, thanks a lot, Colton. Yep. I appreciate all your uh, information today. No problem, guys. All right. Now we've got Craig Greening with us uh, to talk about a couple of new aircraft as well. Uh, we've got the uh, Cirrus and also the Mustang. So we'll start off with the Cirrus. Craig, what can you tell us about it? Cirrus is new from Hangar 9, uh, just announced at the show. Uh, and new for us in the giant scale civilian arena. We've done some, uh, some more classic airplanes, but we're going back to the modern scale scene here. Uh, kind of follows the Cessna 182 from uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So modern scale, full-size Cirrus, very well known in the aviation community as Definitely. a leader in uh, style and, and technology. So uh, what we've done here is we've got a full fiberglass fuselage, 97-inch uh, wingspan, so a good size model. Uh, and the wings are all wood, fully sheeted, and the tail is foam and fully sheeted. The uh, Cirrus is real popular, real attractive uh, aircraft. Right. Also a little bit challenging to land sometimes. We've noticed in, in the past flying RC Cirrus uh, airplanes that they kind of mimic from the full scale, that they have kind of a non-eventful stall. So when you actually reach that point or you cross the threshold, you don't realize something's going on before it's too late. What are right. the landing characteristics of the, of the larger Cirrus? Landing characteristics are really, really nice. We spent, spent a lot of time uh, making sure the handling was, was safe for, for you know, intermediate and up pilots. Anybody who's, who's comfortable flying any kind of scale airplane and okay. certainly the Warbird kind of guy. So we've incorporated the leading edge extensions on the mm -hmm. outboard section there, which help tame the stall characteristics and make slow flight really nice. Gotcha. Um, scale flaps with the external hinging. Mm -hmm. Generous amount of washout, which helps with the handling. Okay. And we're using uh, a really nice airfoil section uh, from actually Michael Seelig. Okay. So it's a blend of Seelig sections especially designed for model use, gotcha. so they're not a scaled down full-size So you did deviate airfoil. enough in, inside of the characteristics uh, Just side a little of the aircraft bit, yeah, to, to make it a little more To really forgiving. tame it yep. down. And we've had guys at Horizon during testing who are very, very new pilots, mm -hmm. just barely soloed, be able to fly this no problem. Oh, that's great. That's good. We look forward to uh, availability on the Cirrus. The airplanes shipped from the factory should be hobby shop shelves and available through horizonhobby.com uh, first or second week of May. Excellent. So look very forward soon, to yeah. It. And you also have the Mustang to talk to us about. We do. Released last week. This is an extension of our 50 series Warbird line, mm -hmm. now called the 40 size Mustang. And this will replace the existing uh, Sport 40 Mustang, which wasn't 
uh, super true to scale as far as outline and appearance. Okay. And what, what we've tried to do with this is hit a broader range of modelers. Okay. So a guy in this size is very comfortable with electric, so it's easy to set up for electric, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, gas and glow uh, friendly also. Yeah, so, it, so it's truly designed not just for glow but also for electric. So battery Correct. tray placement. I, I noticed there's a, right a, a the hatch here, here that, yeah. you have, that you can pull open. Correct. So and that's that's a big key. We've seen a lot of the people convert gas into to our gas or glow into electric, and it's just sure. not quite designed for it. Tough for battery placement, tough for CG. Exactly, yeah. and also for access. Some of the older Absolutely. models, you had to take the wing off every time, exactly, which is really yeah. not the way you want to do it, especially with LiPos. Okay. So it's nice to have the top access. Good, and availability on the, the Mustang as well? End of April, early mm -hmm. May. One thing we did differently with, the, with this uh, compared to the previous two in the series, we mm -hmm. now have flaps as an option. Okay. So you can build it with or without the flaps. Okay, well, that's nice, so you can add in Right. Uh, characteristics then with the uh, with the flaps off. Again, a Mustang comes in pretty smoking hot without flaps sometimes. Very light model and again very friendly airfoils. Okay. So gotcha. without flaps, still an easy lander. Um, fixed landing gear out of the box, and then E-Flight has the uh, optional retract. The electric retract. Bolt right okay. in. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot. We appreciate your time, Craig, no and the information. Kurt. All right. Sure. Well, we've moved around the corner. We're talking with Peter Bergstrom now about the new engines uh, with Horizon. So Peter, go ahead and take us through what you have. Well, thank you. Um, back in December, we released the 10cc engines from uh, Evolution and to great acceptance and fanfare from the customers. Mm -hmm. They've absolutely been loving it. It's designed to fit inside the 46 size airplanes. Okay. Runs a huge range of props, anywhere from an 11.7 all the way to 13.8s, 14.4s. Oh yeah. So guys are finding it very useful for, for real 3D profile type airplanes mm -hmm. or any of their lightweight airplanes there. Or with a slower prop, lower noise. Yep. and they. Yep. Um, they can meet some field noise requirements sometimes. Um, at the show, we've introduced for the very first time three new engines, a 15cc, 20cc, and a 33cc engine. Uh, the 15 is built inside of a 6091 size case, so it's really aimed at the full-size 60 size marketplace, or okay. 60 to 90 airplane marketplace. Um, not quite as broad a prop range, anywhere from like 13.6 all the way to a 15.6, 14.8, that mm -hmm. size props. Um, so it works, it's, it's aimed at that, it's got a bigger mounting pad, so, but it does drop into all the 60 size mounts. Um, 20 cc engine is aimed at the guys where a 15 c is not strong enough in their 60 size airplane. Okay. You know, yep. Same kind of a marketplace that guys are already converting their airplanes into the 20 cc marketplace. Gotcha. So this is our offering for that. Um, all these engines come with the muffler, so the wraparound muffler that you see attached to it is the, is the muffler that it comes with. Oh, that's nice. Um, the three smaller engines with this uh, unique, almost looks like a glow style carburetor, mm -hmm. they all still use muffler pressure. Because we didn't, it's not a pumper carb, we didn't have enough room to put a pump on it. Okay. But we do have a regulator on the front of all three of these carbs. Gotcha. So we run muffler pressure, it gets the fuel here, and then it's regulated from there. The uh, carburetor controls are all very similar to what you're already used to on your glow engines. Mm -hmm. So you've got a high speed needle, low speed needle on the other side, so there's no confusion, it's nothing different. Gotcha. As far as setting the engine as uh, you're used to. Yeah, and, and at, at that size, it's just such an attractive solution too, uh, to yeah. be able to move into, you know. And we left all the engine mount bearers on there for the guys that still have got engine mounts in their airplanes yep. if they like them that way. So we don't have any backplate mounts for these. Now one of the ba benefits, if I can <laughs> sidetrack you for a second, sure. uh, uh, with Evolution has always been a very simplified break-in process. And we've had that experience in the past before. It's pretty much get it in, very little adjustment from out of the box. Right. And you're through your, through your technical break-in period into your broken in run period, very little carb adjustment or needle adjustment. The same way with these. Okay. Um, my we've got the low speed needle set a little bit on the rich side out of the factory, so okay. it's easier to start the first time and yep. it's easier to break in. The uh, 10cc is an ABC style engine. The 15, 20, and 35 are all ring style engines. So there's okay. two different break in processes to do on those two. The okay. 10cc, it's, it's very well laid out in the instruction manual, mm -hmm. but it's a longer break-in process and includes okay. a lot of flying, which I don't think anybody really that's minds. That's not a problem. Yeah, that's not <laughs> a problem. Um, the ringed engines can be broken in more on a bench than the ABC engine can. Okay. You want to run them a little bit richer at mm -hmm. first, but then most of your break-in is done in the air. Oh, that's good. So yeah. you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on the ground. The other thing that we came up with, especially for the smaller engines, is we've come out with a smaller ignition box. Okay. This is about half the size of the standard ignition box, so it fits into 40 size airplanes, fits into 60 size airplanes much easier. Um, simple, uh, connects to the pickup, mm -hmm. connects to the battery, and then there's also a tachometer lead that comes off of it, so you can okay. plug a tack into it, 
We also supply with all these air, uh, engines a cable that will plug into our spectrum telemetry module. Okay. So you just directly go into that, don't have to add anything else, and you can read the RPM right oh, on that's your handy. transmitter. You're also running HV on that, I noticed as well. Yes, you yeah. can run these anywhere from a four cell nickel metal high drive to a 2S light bulb pack with no, no regulator in between. Um, and then the fourth engine from Evolution that's newest is the Evolution 33cc. This is a replacement for our previous 26GX series okay. that we used to have. Um, this has a standard Wobbler carburetor on there, yep. so for the guys that are into this marketplace already, they'll know how to use this. High and low speed needle adjustments. We've added a nice convenient arm on the one side so you don't have to come up with some other way <laughs> yeah. to do it yourself. That's a nice way of so putting it. Other way, to, other way it, yeah. To, yeah. to try to actually connect. It comes with two different styles of mounts. It's got rail mounts. For those guys that still want to use a, a motor mount, I got solid mounts in there already. Mm -hmm. In that case, this is the backplate mount is removable. Okay. So it's just four screws, take it off, put it back, put the screws back in, and you can save about three ounces or so, four ounces of weight by taking by that off the there. By taking mount. the, okay. yep. or if you like the firewall mount and how clean that is, yep. it's already included with it. Once again, the muffler comes with this. Of course, no muffler pressure with this because this is a pumper carburetor. Mm -hmm. um, turns all the standard 30 to 35 cc size propellers anywhere from 17.8 to 19.8s, 27s, we've all we've oh, worked wow, with all that's of them. Great. Um, and so those are the four new engines from uh, Evolution. The, the 10cc, like I said, started selling back in December uh, and we have been out of stock on that since about the end of February. Okay. All four of these will be back in around the 1st of May. Uh, from Sato this year, we've got a new FG40. It's a 40cc four-stroke. It is going to replace their 36cc okay. four-strokes. A um, little bit more capacity, a little bit bigger propeller, about the same RPM. Uh, they've gone to the same style of an ignition unit, like we're using with Evolution, the same small box. Really? Okay. So, and with the same width of battery. So, okay. it's, an, it's a nice improvement for them, and uh, this is... 40cc to be competitive in their four-stroke marketplace. Absolutely. And then the last thing that we've got new this year is Sato also came out with a second version of the 57 Twin. It's a 57cc okay. gasoline engine. Uh, they came out with the first one about a little more than a year ago and it's been selling very well and guys are really enjoying it. What we changed on this was all in the mounting area. The previous, the other version has got a big cast motor mount mm -hmm. and the carburetor goes down. This one we lighten it up, took about four ounces of weight off of it, and hoping to get some of the aerobatic guys interested. Pointed the carburetor back through the firewall mm -hmm. so you can clean fresh air there. And then we added because you see the, the big old heat sink on the we back added here. a heat sink on the bottom because that cast motor mount provided a good heat sink right. before. So we've replaced that heat sink effect with a real heat sink on the bottom it's of it. It's a pretty modern look. Yeah, pretty, both pretty engines are, are still available. We're selling both of them. They're both exactly the same price. Okay. So it's just whatever style a customer wants. Excellent. Well, thank you, Peter. I appreciate sure you thing. taking some time and explaining the new product. Thanks for us. stopping by. And everything, uh, by the summer, pretty much everything will be available that you've shown. Yeah, this will be May 1st, and these two engines from Sato are already in stock. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thank you.